Hello and welcome to another one of our Brexit Explain videos. In this one we're going to take a look at how the current version of the Withdrawal Agreement Bill differs from the one that was offered to Parliament in October. The Conservatives brought the Withdrawal Agreement Bill back to the House in December, but they've made a few changes. We're going to have a look through it and we think there's basically six big changes worth pointing out. Before we jump into the list, one super quick thing. If you're interested in the EU, the Union itself and the countries it comprises of, check out our new TLDR EU channel for more videos about Europe coming soon. So let's get back to the Withdrawal Agreement Bill and the six ways that it's been changed. The first concerns the transition period. Currently the transition period runs until the end of 2020, but in the October version of the Withdrawal Agreement Bill, the transition period could have been extended to December 2022. However, in the new December version, the transition period can no longer be extended, meaning the date is set for December 2020. This doesn't actually make much difference in legal terms. That's because with a parliamentary majority this large, Johnson can simply change it back relatively easily, which means it's more of a political statement of intent, that the government is really serious about leaving the EU as soon as possible. The second important change is that Parliament no longer has any say over the negotiations. Previously, Parliament had to approve any negotiating positions adopted by the government, and any government negotiations had to be consistent with the October political declaration. Furthermore, the government had to report back to Parliament on how negotiations were going every three months. Under the new version of the agreement, the government can negotiate as it wants, without Parliament's permission, and it doesn't have to report back to Parliament either. Again, in practice, this doesn't make much difference. Given that Parliament is full of Conservative MPs who are likely going to agree with whatever the government came back with anyway, but it essentially reasserts the government's right as an executive to negotiate international treaties independently. This was to be expected in some way. The government only originally gave Parliament any insight to try and tempt it into voting for the deal, and now they've got a big majority, this isn't necessary anymore. On Wednesday, MPs attempted to amend the bill and add these protections back in, but they were ultimately unsuccessful. For more on this, check out the video we put out earlier in the week. The third change is that the section on workers' rights has been removed. Previously, if the government wanted to diverge on EU workers' standards, they had to make a statement to Parliament confirming that yes, they were departing from EU standards, as well as giving the reason they wanted to do that. Now, under the new rules, they don't have to give notice if they do this. Again, this was sort of expected. The section protecting workers' rights was introduced as a concession from the government to try and tempt Labour MPs to vote for the deal. But now the government has a stonking great majority, they don't need any so-called sweeteners. The fourth change is a bit more technical. The December Withdrawal Agreement Bill gives UK courts the permission to depart from legal precedents previously set by the European Court of Justice. Whereas before, according to the European Union Withdrawal Act, only the UK's Supreme Court would be able to overturn ECJ precedent. The fifth one is a bit more unusual. According to the European Union Withdrawal Agreement, any unaccompanied children seeking asylum in the EU who have relatives in the UK have to be taken to the UK. This is standard protocol within the EU. If an asylum-seeking child has relatives in some other country, they should go there. Last year, some 400 children came to the UK this way. Anyway, the December Withdrawal Agreement Bill relieves the UK of their obligations in this respect, and instead says that the UK will decide their own child asylum policy, and make a relevant statement within two months, basically before April. As with an earlier change, on Wednesday, MPs attempted to amend the bill and put these protections back in, but again, they were ultimately unsuccessful. For more on this, check out the video we made on it earlier in the week. The sixth and final change is perhaps the biggest, or at least the most interesting change. In the original Withdrawal Agreement Bill, the government agreed to set up an independent body called the Independent Monitoring Authority for the Citizens' Rights Agreements, conveniently abbreviated to IMA. This authority could monitor the government's compliance with its obligation about EU citizens' rights. It would essentially be an ombudsman for EU nationals living in the UK to make sure they were being treated fairly throughout the process. For example, if the UK ends up leaving the EU without a deal at the end of the transition period, a possibility we've discussed in an earlier video, this could leave EU nationals in limbo. And with the IMA, they've got a means of protecting themselves. However, the new version of the Withdrawal Agreement Bill gives the government the power to essentially fold the IMA into a pre-existing body, like the Home Office. It's unclear why the government would want to do this, but a working theory is that it essentially provides them with some leverage against the IMA. 
and this would affect the IMA's ability to, well, just simply do its job. The IMA has two means of redress. It can launch public inquiries, and it can bring judicial review proceedings against a public authority. But if either of these activities undermine the government, and they likely would, then the IMA could essentially face the threat of being dissolved, thus disincentivizing them from truly scrutinizing government behavior. There's a more innocent explanation though. It could just be that the government wants to simplify these proceedings, and avoid creating unnecessary acronyms. But if this were the case, surely it would just assimilate some other pre-existing body straight off the bat, instead of holding the threat of assimilation over the IMA's head. So these are the major changes that Johnson's government has made to the Withdrawal Agreement Bill in the past month or so. If you want a full overview of the Withdrawal Agreement, then check out the video we made on the original version of the bill, that's a link down below, as well as all of the other videos I've mentioned. If you want to be updated on this as it plays out, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also find us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News.